Okay. So you're here because you either teach individualized multi-level or you're supporting teachers who are dealing with, um, who are living with that kind of reality. Um, so we know it's, it's tricky. So hopefully you'll come away from the session with a few ideas for how to make it flow a little bit more smoothly. So our goals for today, sharing practices and resources for planning and tracking in our individualized multi-level context and hopefully building connections between people so that we can share resources, share ideas to continue to make our lives easier. So this document right here, if you click that, I'm gonna open it up for us. This is what, and I'm gonna make it a lot bigger because that's kind of small. Is that a bit better for people to see? Okay, so this is our little cheat sheet. This is our loop bag for you. Uh, we're gonna walk you through some of the tips and tricks and resources that we've got here related to planning and tracking. So um, there's a lot of different suggestions here. We're gonna take you through a couple of them and leave you to explore uh, the rest of them on your own. Um, so I believe, Shanna, was it you who was gonna present the first resource? Um, basically, uh, for the first part, it's organizing your course. Um, so for individualized, having some sort of way um, that you aren't always the one giving the teachers, uh, uh, giving the students the materials is, uh, is kind of key for them to, to be able to move on to stuff as they're handing it in. So there's no real resource under that, but you know, being able to plan that out, whether it's on Moodle, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, creating a website, even just a paper. I used to have a binder for each one of the courses and it was accessible to the students all the time and it had all the assignments and stuff in it and they could just go grab the one they needed next and, and go uh, is super, um, super important. Uh, helping students to set goals for their course completion and creating study plans is also uh, a good way uh, to help the students in planning their stuff. So they're setting goals. There's a little plan there. You don't need to go into it. It's super simple though for the students. It's basically, you know, how many hours is this course supposed to take you? Uh, what are your assignments? Map it out over, you know, four weeks, six weeks, whatever. And, uh, and that, so that is there. Uh, reason going so fast, I mean, something like that, you guys know all about it anyways, but um, we want to get through some of this stuff so that our big discussion is everyone sharing stuff afterwards. I yes. think Nicole wanted to do something about uh, learning objectives and stuff as well as in the work. Yeah, there's an example there. We have, we've linked uh, in this document um, examples and or templates that you'll be able to use in your planning. Um, this is a vocational training example. Um, our Brick Lane course is individualized. Uh, so we have 17 competencies uh, that the teachers are teaching to, right now we have 28 students. Um, what they've done is they've built their resources in a way that the students can really learn to become a bricklayer without a teacher being involved, uh, except for at key checkpoints. And that's the part that allows the teachers to move, the students to move forward at a pace that is acceptable and for the teachers to track. So if you scroll down, Emily, it'll show um, after the activity, this is, this is a ridiculous <laughs> planning spreadsheet where they have the day and then the amount of time that the students should be spending uh, per booklet and uh, what the results will look like. So it allows the students to see very clearly what are my goals, what are my learning intentions for this competency uh, and allows the teachers, if you scroll further, Emily, real fast, just to show an example, you'll see right here um, where it shows the students that they need to see the teacher. There's a box, it indicates in the box that the students need to go see the teacher to have the teacher evaluate what they've done so far in the booklet. It literally tells the students go see the teacher instead of the teacher trying to chase the students. Super cool. That's it. 
Yeah, I think a lot of this is about like anticipating the needs that your students are going to have and doing like pre-planning to ensure that you've got resources in place to support students so that when they come to those, they have all those questions, they're not constantly exactly going to be running to you. They, they know what they need to do, that it's all clear for them. Yeah. Um, so another thing related to that is uh, for saving ourselves time, super important, um, can relate to the way that we give assignments. Obviously, there are some assignments that um, um, are like more involved and the teacher needs to be the one correcting them, but there are also opportunities that we can um, use something like a self-correcting assignment, like a form. So this is an example um, from a history class for the new history curriculum. An example I created, I'm using a Google form where I'm having the students uh, engage with documents, they're selecting the answers. Um, and when they, there's a little evaluation grid to let them know how I'm gonna be marking them. But if I jump a little bit deeper into this, I've put in feedback for the students. So they fill out this form if they don't give me the correct answers, they're going to see a little something pop up, which has a little explanation and some extra resources for them to explore. Um, so students fill out this form, they get this email when they submit the form with, and it'll show them all the answers and those extra resources. So it might take a little bit of time to create some of these things, but it'll save you time from having to correct um, these like easier types of questions. Um, and that student will get automatic feedback. They'll know right away if they're on track or not. They won't need to wait oh, like a couple days or a week for you to get back to them. Shanna, did you wanna briefly mention this part? Uh, yeah, part of, uh, part of having things run smoothly in the individualized classroom, especially when you get into the online and the tech stuff is uh, pre-teaching the students how to use the things that they're gonna be seeing on their own. Um, so at our center, we actually developed some local courses um, that now all, because of COVID, now all the students have to take um, a technology course for learning with us. Um, so I got together with all the teachers. I found out kind of the main things that they were using. We've all gone Moodle and Google uh, in our center. So uh, now students have to come through me and I teach them all the computer stuff before they're allowed to go into the, our virtual school. And all the ones who are in presence, they also have to do it with me at some point in time in their first probably month or so that they're with us so that if ever we shut down again, they have all the competencies to be able to learn and stuff online. It's been a saving grace for all the, um, for all of our teachers. They have, uh, bar none, they have said, uh, you have to keep doing this. We want this to continue even after COVID. And um, yeah, alternatively, if you don't have something in place where it's going to all the, uh, all the um, students who are coming in through the center, you can create your own playlists and stuff uh, of videos and cheat sheets and things that um, that the students will be uh, using in your class. So like Google Drive, for example, and Google stuff, there's already playlists created, so you can just curate it as well if you don't have time to do your own. And most importantly, we're going to come back to this several times throughout the workshop, is connecting with other teachers. So um, if you're an AGE teacher in a small center, you might be the only person teaching your subject. So getting in touch with other teachers at other boards who teach that same subject as you, sharing resources, sharing ideas can be super valuable. Um, if you're in um, a vocational training setting, there might be other centers that are teaching the same things as you, or um, if you have common preps with another teacher in the same program as you, kind of thinking through um, from a big program view, how you can facilitate that process, which is something that Nicole is going to uh, share with us a little bit later. She's got some cool things. Okay, 
So in terms of tracking, obviously planning and tracking kind of go together. We want to plan so that we have all of the resources available to our students, but we also want to make sure uh, that we're um, keeping on top of how they're advancing in our course. So we have, uh, we thought about it in kind of two different ways. So first, um, teachers developing their own tracking systems to keep track of how their students are moving through the course. So using something like uh, course outlines. Let's see this one, for example. So these were developed by teachers out in Eastern Townships. So Shanna's teachers. Do you want to? Um, yeah, so we use math health services. So the teachers got together, I think with uh, maybe Jessica Lee as well, uh, probably had some input on this and they changed things into I can statements. And then they, they mapped out on MHS, what were the videos that they had to watch, the exercises they had to do for each of the course so that it was really mapped out to the actual course and not maybe necessarily to math health services. So, um, so for all of you math teachers, you have, uh, they have willingly shared their, um, all of their course outlines. So they're all there uh, for you to click on. Um, Another thing that teachers can use, this is something from Sarah Shemette, who is a, an, an individualized ELA teacher in um, Western Quebec. This is something that she shared at a previous Aplico last year, I believe it was. Feels like longer uh, ago that that happened. So she, when COVID hit, she put in place this form. She was kind of doing like a hybrid thing. Some of her students were in person, some of her students were online. So she developed this form for her students to check in with her at the start of every week. So they would let her know what course number they're working on, if they reached their goals from last week, if not, what was um, preventing them from doing that. Students were asked to set a goal for each week, something that was specific and attainable. So for example, she was using uh, SOFAD textbook. So it, she said, like, what page are you hoping to reach in your book? Um, whether they needed, she needed to get ready to order an exam for them or do a pretest, rate their motivation, and if there was anything else they wanted to share with her, something maybe in their personal lives that was affecting them or um, whatever the case may be. And so this, when she, um, she made this form and it generated an Excel sheet for her so that she was able to keep track. She could filter by student and see when, like, if that student, specific student was able to hit their goals or whatever support that they needed. Um, and so she was able to kind of keep all that data in the Excel sheet that was automatically generated from this form. So she found that really helpful. <clears throat> So that's, those are some ideas for teacher tracking systems, but also super important that we have way, that we're kind of giving opportunities for our students to own their learning, that they are being accountable for their learning as well. So we thought of, we came up with a couple of suggestions for that. Um, so um, are there any specific ones that uh, you want me to highlight from here? Anybody? If not, I'm going to just pick one. Any and all are good, Emily. Okay. All right. So this resource is an example from uh, Dr. Catlin Tucker, um, who's like a guru of blended learning. She's one of my fave um, online bloggers, teaching bloggers. So she has uh, what is called an ongoing self-assessment document. So it's a little bit like... Um, the check-in form that uh, I shared that Sarah had created, but it has students reflecting on um, the standard or skill, we would say like competency um, that students are working on, um, sharing a particular assignment that they um, are working on, what 
score they're giving themselves on this assignment. So you could even maybe like attach um, a rubric there that a student is using a particular rubric. They're, they're rating themselves on the same rubric that they're gonna see on their exam. And as well, uh, a little reflection space here for them um, in terms of how they think that assignment went. So this could be something that you're using in conjunction with um, like a conferencing model. So you have planned to have a check-in with X number of students at different intervals. Um, and then they bring this kind of thing to that conference and you have a chance to chat with them about their learning and check in if there's anything in particular that they need. Um, but it makes it something so that it's not just the student is being given a grade, um, but they're also kind of thinking through, they have to think about it a little bit more concretely. Like, did I actually demonstrate that? How am I gonna prove that to my teacher that I did demonstrate this competency? Where can I point to in my assignment that shows that I did this? And once again, connect, connect, connect. Um, so asking other teachers what they're doing to track their students, getting ideas, um, and maybe even implementing um, systems as a group. So I'm gonna segue right over to you, Nicole, to share um, the resource that you have from some bricklaying teachers at Riverside. And I'm gonna stop sharing so that you can share. I just popped the link into the chat for you to share, but that's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I don't see it in the chat. There we go, but you're muted. So you'll need to unmute yourself so we can hear your explanation. It's hard to unmute when you're not in full screen. Okay, <laughs> uh, this is a very complex tool that our uh, bricklaying teachers had developed. Um, when I say had developed, they did not develop this themselves. They had it made um, in order to track our student completion. In vocational training, it's especially important to keep students on task and moving through their program in a timely manner because we are funded on exam and not on presence time. Uh, so for AGE, we want our students moving forward, but in VT, it's um, it's the bread and butter of the building. Uh, we can't pay the teachers unless the students get through their, their competencies. Um, so this tracking document um, allows the teachers to see, I click on time sheet, there we go, um, how many hours the students have missed class, uh, which competencies or which days they missed, uh, and the percentage of time that they are missing from the classroom. Um, for our support staff, it calculates our ETPs, so the number of students being generated out of our individualized program um, based on the modules that the students have completed over time. Um, it also allows per individual student tracking to see which module they have completed or if they're in progress, if they haven't started yet, um, when they're projected uh, finish date is uh, because we do have that's in my in the summary um, because it is an individualized program and it's in a workspace we only have a limited amount of space for the students so each student is assigned a space in our workshop when the student is projected to be finished their program depending on the pace that they're, they're moving through the competencies then our support staff knows that they can register new students to the program so it allows the teachers to see down to the minute where the students are in every competency, which is incredibly complex and a lot of work went into, <laughs> it went into creating to get to the point where they had a document like this. There was a lot of pre-work that went into it, starting with unpacking the curriculum. They really went through every single competency and noted every single element of the competency and where they overlapped between each competency so that they could teach efficiently. So that's, that, that, tool that I just showed is three years in the making. And just to say, like, don't get overwhelmed by that, because uh, that's definitely not something that's in my wheelhouse uh, at all. Uh, I could not, I can barely even like read an Excel sheet, let alone like do that. But I mean, I still know exactly where all of my students are, where they are in their courses. And I do it with just the simple, uh, 
you know, I have my, my outlines, my outline corresponds to theirs. I kind of put in my start date, my end date that I think they're going to get to. Usually after a week, I know if they're moving along at a good pace or if it's going to take them longer, if they, they have different skills that they need to build. And, you know, I have the, the rubrics, the student-friendly rubrics and the examples and the things like that. And just doing that, you can get a good, uh, good feel for where your students are and their competencies as well. So it can go from everything as simple as just, you know, having your little course outlines to, you know, if you're the tech person or you have students who will create these wonderful things for you or administrators or wherever, if you can get them, then you can implement stuff like that. But the idea is in any system that you do, it has to work for you. Because mm -hmm. if you're not a, like, I'm not so sure that even if I had that Excel sheet, I would be apt to use it, right? It seems a little complicated to me. I have my own little system that works for me. And that's really the key to tracking is find yourself a system that really works for your style of teaching and you know something that you will use and be comfortable using all the time. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so one of the things that we really want to take the time to do today is to um, provide opportunities for teachers to connect with one another. So in order to do that, um, you may have received an email from me yesterday <laughs> about how to sign up for the Anglo community on Moodle. So the links for both, um, I sent out both some tutorial videos, which look like this, they show up here. <clears throat> in this loom, which is me walking you through the process for engaging in these communities and uh, the link to where this community is housed. So this is, we're going to take um, a little bit of time uh, to show you how to log in here, how to create an account, um, and to engage in some discussion forums that we've got started. And so the purpose of these is, yes, it's lovely for us to be able to be here um, live together and be able to like verbally chat with one another, but we also want to provide a space where teachers can connect with each other um, asynchronously. Um, and so we can, we can kind of get that kind of chat going. So <clears throat> I'm going to stick this link. This is the link for Moodle FGL, which is where we are going to do the rest of our uh, workshop today. <clears throat> so there's this space over here, uh, log in using your account on Google or Microsoft. So if you are a Google board, we want you to click that Google button. If you uh, are a Microsoft board, I want you to click on the Microsoft button. So what's gonna happen when you do that is that it's probably going to send you an email, might end up in your junk or your spam, depending on um, what board you are, it's either called junk or spam. Um, and there'll be a link to confirm your registration on Moodle FJA. So I'm gonna have you hit the Google and Microsoft button and then go and check your email for that confirmation message from them. And then I will share the next step. And if you could give me a little thumbs up or a little something in the chat. Okay, so Carla, for example, Microsoft said she needed permission. So she's using her personal Gmail. Gotcha. Is that a board restriction, Emily? Or is that, that's not on the Moodle side of things, is it? Yeah, what did it say, Carla? Did it say talk to your IT or did it give any extra info? Just a sec. I know I got sent back an email to my school board email address about it. Um, 
So it was, it says New Frontiers School Board Moodle FGA access request received. Hmm. Your request has been received. Details of your request are below and just gives like the date that I, that I did it. Okay. That was sick. So Frank's having the same issue. So you just clicked the uh, new account button. Was that it? Where you created one all by yourself? Yeah, I just, I create, I went to the, I clicked on the uh, Google button instead because I knew I had my own personal Gmail address already. Perfect. Yeah. So do whatever works for you. Has everybody gotten some sort of email in their inbox from Moodle? This is good information to have though, if Microsoft people are all getting the same message back, we can look into it further. Yeah, like I know it worked for me, for my Microsoft, um, but it could be just that different boards have different um, permission settings within their, for their accounts. Okay. We're not allowed to do anything, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Just do that Google button like Carla did, um, and you'll be able to use your personal Gmail. Okay, so I'm going to demo the next step. So I'm going to log in. All right, this is my Moodle dashboard. The community is already visible to me because I have already signed up because I created it. So you guys, we're going to click this lovely site home button on the side. And we see a whole bunch of things. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom where it says CS Anglophone. So we did site home, scroll all the way down to CS Anglophone. And by the way, all the, the whole, all the steps for this are in Moodle tutorial number one in that first link here. What do you mean by the rest, Tanya? Um, all the other tabs like uh... The First Nations tab, the Laval tab, everything else above the Anglophone community? Excellent question. Um, it depends. I think that all of these here are specific. Um, so a bit of a bit of both. So let's say this one, for example, this is a teacher who has created a whole Moodle course for uh, the new financial ed. Um, and I see that there's a little key here. So this means that I I'm not able to access it because the teacher has locked it down for their own students to use. So it depends. Some things are open and some things are not. You kind of have to go and explore. What so is- just, just to say that Moodle FGA, um, some of the other boards, especially on the French side, this is the Moodle they're using. So all of the, like, that's why all of the regions are on here because they don't have like, our board has our own personal Moodle, but in the French sector, the French sector, everyone is on this Moodle FGA. Mm -hmm. So all of the courses for, you know, all the other centers, a lot of them are here. Yeah. So that's why you don't have access to them. They're actually teacher classes for their students. Mm -hmm. Um, the French sector does have this zone des enseignants et professionnels, which is open to us as well. So that's sort of like the same thing that we're setting up right here um, is the Salon National des Enseignants. So you see there's no uh, little like logo or whatever. So I can just jump right into this. It's a space for all teachers and all sorts of different subjects to go and communicate with one another. So that's exactly what we've set up what we've set up for you to kind of engage with today, except it's all in English and it's for our Anglo network. So once you click on CS Anglophone, there's three communities here. The one that we want you to join, we'd like you to join, 
is the Anglophone community right here. It's going to ask you for a little password. It's Anglocom. And you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and click access with that lovely little Anglocom password. How are we doing so far? Everybody's navigating it okay. Right. So I'm going to move ahead here. Once we have joined the community, this is what it looks like. There's a couple of hidden tiles here that you will not see on your end, but I can because I'm the editor. Um, so we've got tabs for um, all the different subjects, but the one that we want to explore here is individualized multi-level teaching. So for all any VT people here, this community is sort of AGE specific, but this individualized multi-level teaching forum, anybody can contribute to this. If you're here, you want to share ideas, this is... Um, Sector agnostic, I'm going to say. It's whoever is dealing with uh, individualized multi level teaching. All right. So, this is like the gold of Moodle for us here is we've set up a discussion forum. So, uh, we've got a couple of different uh, discussion topics that I've started um, that we'd like you to contribute to today to get a chance to see what that's like. But if you've got something that's not here that you want to add, you want to start a conversation about, all you have to do is click that blue button, give your message a little subject, type away, and then post it to the forum. So for example, I'm going to look at this one, um, tracking student progress. So what Shanna and Nicole and I have done is we've put in some discussion questions related to what we've shared today. And we have each taken the time to respond and share some resources, share um, some thoughts, some of which can also be found in that document that we walked you through today. Um, and so it's a, a way for us to start this conversation and kind of keep it going um, past this workshop as well. So there's three questions that are already there for us to engage with. Um, and we'd like to hear what your thoughts are. So click on one of those three topics once you've jumped into the community and, uh, and add a response. That's what we would like for you to do for part of the remainder of this workshop before we wrap up. Basically, the idea is to have a discussion about some of this, and if, as you're as you're talking or whatever, if you have resources of your own to contribute, this is the one way that anyone can add to this Moodle course because it's kind of like a course. The way it's it's not really a course, but that that's how Moodle is designed. So, in order to be able for you guys to share, it's through the forum that you can put links to things and uh, share resources with other teachers. Um, so yeah, basically you guys are here because obviously, uh, you know, you're trying to support teachers or you are a teacher yourself and you have, um, yeah, you have needs because in an individualized world, it's super crazy. Most of the time we're in reaction mode. So um, yeah, here's your chance to ask uh, other people for you know, resources, for help, for ideas, because that's, um, that's how we roll. Yeah. So if anybody's having trouble um, getting into the community, 
let me know and we'll troubleshoot you while we're here together. If not, type away into those forums. Or add your own discussion questions. Or just talk. <laughs> Since we are alive, we can unmute and use our voices too. Hi, Virginie. Hello. So I'm late, I apologize. I'm gonna listen. Is there anybody that's got a, a particular um, struggle with individualized um, tracking and planning related to that that you wanted to bring to the table? I just had a question. You mentioned them um, about, you know, when you're the only one say that's teaching something and you want to reach out. Is there, what or what is the quickest way to find out um, who else is teaching the same thing as you? Excellent question, Carla. <laughs> we were just, we just talked about that um, just before this. So what we are proposing, which we haven't passed through all the PED consultants yet, but what we are proposing to do is that as PED consultants across the province, we are going to build um, a list of all the individualized teachers and what subject areas. We had already started it, so it's starting to get populated. But to make sure that we do have all of them, we are going to do this in the next little while. And then we will email all of the individualized teachers who have agreed to be on this. Um, we will email all of you this list so that you guys can connect directly when you have, um, when you have questions, need resources, uh, need somebody to chat with, uh, whatever. Yeah, and I believe too that on the VT side, there's another community for VT teachers to connect with other teachers in their program um, in other places across the province. Um, and that is available via the proceed site. But if anybody can jump in and remind me of what that is called, um, feel free to do so. I'll put the link in the chat, Emily. Thank you, Nicole. Once I navigate my way there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the okay. person that you can reach out to is probably Robin Long, um, because uh, the person that was leading it is now leaving. So that network is, is a little in a bit of a tangle right now. <laughs> okay, good to know. Xavier is leaving? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Xavier is going, he got a job teaching. Oh. Yeah, so, and, and um, so not exactly sure what's, who's stepping in or if somebody's stepping in. But that, that site's already up and running, Kelly, the, the connect like the site for teachers to yeah. network and connect on and share oh, on the proceed yeah, on the, yeah I'm going to put the link for that in so that because we do have it we do have um, some VT teachers that are at this workshop um, not that you can't go to the anglophone community individualized uh, there's some things that are universal uh, whether it be a course outline or um, a check-in like a student check-in or goal setting sheet that's it doesn't matter if you're in vocational training or if you're in adult general education, you can use those mm -hmm. cross-curricularly, we'll say. Yeah, okay, so I see some raised hands here. So you've got Nancy and Virginie. Nancy. Hi, thanks. Um, right now I'm teaching at Place Cartier. Uh, it's adult ed and I used to teach at PAC. Hi, Hepta. <laughs> How you doing? Um, so um, I'm, yeah, I'm really curious about um, using Moodle or maybe another LMS because we use uh, we use Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know. I'm like thinking about if we had uh, if we could use a different LMS, like maybe because um, it could be too challenging if teachers have to all relearn a new LMS. Mm -hmm. But maybe like if there was uh, one that could be used. Uh, that could be student facing and that you didn't always have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, if we want to create things in articulate storyline, for example, so they can be tracked, right? They, you need something that's SCORM compatible, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, like how hard is that to set up? Is it free? Uh, any information, <laughs> please. Excellent question. 
Um, and if you've never heard of SCORM before, don't worry. I only know about SCORM because I did a special degree and they told me about this thing called SCORM. Um, what does it stand for, Nancy? I can't remember. Something complicated. Anyway, it means you can create really fancy online learning experiences that, like Nancy said, um, will track your students as they progress through that online course. Um, so it's it takes a lot to create those kinds of courses, uh, totally possible, but okay, about LMSs here. So like Shanna mentioned before, uh, Moodle FCA, um teachers can create their own courses on this Moodle FCA platform and have their students log in. So um, and, and do the course through this platform. That's possible um, because sometimes uh, Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams, they're not, I'm going to say, optimized for individualized learning. They're excellent if you're doing whole class because when you post something, it goes to everybody. Um, but Moodle allows a student to, um, like, as they finish an assignment, the next one will pop up for them. And it kind of, it's kind of like gamification. You're kind of unlocking your learning as you're moving through the course, uh, which is pretty cool for a teacher in an individualized setting. Um, so yeah, that's something that uh, we could chat about is having teachers experiment with using Moodle who don't have like Shanna, a whole Moodle platform for ETSB that's available for them. Um, yeah, so if you wanna chat about that, hit me up and we can we could play around. Virginie, what about you? You have your hand raised too. Oh, big questions. Brace yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I missed the first part, so I feel a bit bad, but um, I teach an individualized program at Access on mm -hmm. the South Shore uh, in the Secretarial uh, Studies program. Mm -hmm. I teach with two other teachers, and uh, we've been having discussions. Uh, one of the questions, what do we mean? Uh, okay, let, do you accept? I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to tell you what I think is the answer, and you correct me. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> so one of the questions, what do we mean by individualized? Mm -hmm. What I think <laughs> is it's a, it's a way of learning that, that is a, a, sorry, second language learner here. It's a way of learning where students can join at uh, many times throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I think this is why we create that because we don't want the, tell the students wait until next September mm -hmm. so they can join uh, at specific times, maybe once a month or continuously. Uh, and because of that, because of the class management side of that, uh, they, the expectation is, is that they're going to work. There's more on their shoulders in yeah. terms of autonomy, work, class work, uh, because everybody's doing support different things supposedly yes i'm with you there and uh it might not be for everyone or maybe mm -hmm. it is i don't know i um uh, okay and the, do you okay so 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 far am i on the right track or it's there's something wrong okay yeah sounds ringing true to me <laughs> the thing that i i have trouble with a little bit is um Sometimes I hear or we talk and we say they can work at their, their own rhythm. They can work at their own speed. Mm -hmm. uh, and to that, I am uh, not sure because uh, when are they going to finish the program? You know, uh, I think each module in VT has a specific uh, amount of hours. You can go over somewhat and you can also go under somewhat. I don't think they can do what they want. That's what I mean. Uh, you know, if I teach writing in French, it's 90 hours. Yeah. I, it can't be done in 15. I don't yeah. know. That's the, that's the big question. Can they really work at their own rhythm or are there still uh, 
regulations are, you know? Uh, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll field it. Yeah, I'll <laughs> field it. I got it. I got it, Emily. <laughs> Uh, you're asking you're asking the AGEV or HC consultant um long hey, in the short I, long in the short Virginie, no they cannot work at their own rhythm even though yes individualized we would want the student to work at their own pace in vocational training we are bound to the number of hours that come with the program of study um and our secretarial program in fact is one of our programs in individualized that is way over the allotted amount of time that students should be spending in their competencies, mm -hmm. uh, which costs money at the end of the day uh, because we have to pay teachers to teach those classes and the students are not funding the, the teacher's paychecks because they're not writing exams. Um, so we did, it, we're, I'll go back over some stuff with you later, Virginie, on uh, what we talked about at the beginning for tracking and moving those students along uh, because students cannot be expected to move through a course at their own pace independently and completely autonomously without having some sort of goal or motivation or factors that are going to support them in their learning. So mm -hmm. as much as the students are working autonomously, for the most part, the teacher plays a central role yeah. in providing feedback. And so We've, we've shared a few tips and tricks on using technology to give that feedback so that you have more time. And I know our, I know your context because our secretarial individualized program has a whack of students in it, lots and lots of students in lots and lots of different places in many different competencies. So yeah, uh, it's but hard I to have track. no issues. I have no issues okay, in there French you because the, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I have no issues in French. Um, uh, I mean, because the time is blocked, you know, so, and I'm a stickler to the rules. Uh, it's my personality. So uh, very rigid. No, not, I'm working on it, but it's, if, if it's 90 hours, I plan 90 hours of learning. There's no way you'll do that in 15. It's no. just that I'm told faster, faster, faster. <laughs> so we can faster, go faster, over faster. or under you, in vocational training. You can go over or under by 20% in certain competencies. But it needs to be that that has to be planned out ahead of time, and your program of study cannot be shortened. So yeah. if the program of study is 900 hours, it's 900 hours. So yeah. if you if you displace some of the learning from competency one into competency two because competency two is harder, then you're still keeping to the total number of hours for the course. Unlike an AGE where you can be completely flexible, a student could do a 25 hour course in 10 hours if. They're super motivated and and ready in a in a good learning stance. They they really fit in an AGE course, but in a vocational training course, you've got to follow the number of hours are prescriptive. That was the, my big question. So I, I'm going to stop now because I think maybe other people have questions. But uh, because I in my gut was telling me you have to follow the program and competencies take time to develop. It's not about doing exercises only. Mm -hmm. To me, you know, uh, <laughs> it's not like give me my 400 pages exercise book, then is your exam. This book I'm solo. We would hope that that's not what individualized teaching is. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not about executing things, it's also yeah. about thinking, and that takes time. It cannot be rushed, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Does anybody else have any questions, or shall we wrap up? Oh my god, no second. Okay, all right. How's our four so, doing there, Emily? Do, 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 do. Let me refresh it. Yeah, we've got one extra response to that first one on tracking student progress. That's Nancy. So I'll follow up with you, Nancy. Um, no others yet. So we highly encourage you to sign up and join and contribute to the forums. You can also, if you're AGE, you can explore some of the other ones, uh, other forums for subject specific too, feel free. So that's also a reason that we chose to put you on here um, so that you have like, there's other stuff that's being developed and will be added to. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop for you. You'll have access to materials and the other subject areas in there at the same time. So that's kind of why we chose to put you into this platform today as well, so that it gives you access to, once you're signed up for this, it'll give you access to a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Yeah. Um, 
for and example. Think, yep. Here, I'll just click one so you guys can see what it looks like. So forms for lots of different courses, plus links to elsewhere. There you go, a little aperçu. Okay, so to wrap us up today with the seven minutes that we have left, um, we had some resources that we shared during the first applicable that we did that was specific to individualized and multi-level teaching. That one was a general one. We had sent out a survey to ask um, AGE teachers what different um, struggles they were having with individualized and multi-level. Um, so we've prepared some resources there. You can also view the recording is available here if you would like to watch it. Um, these were the themes that had emerged. So what we'd like to know from you now is um, where, where do we go from here? Do you, would you like to have more um, chances to talk with other individualized multi-level teachers? If so, is there a particular theme that is jumping out to you that you would like to uh, engage with? I would, I would, because we are, if we're doing the same thing and we work so hard, why not pull our resources uh, together? Mm -hmm. If we get along. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you can let us know in the chat if there's a particular theme that uh, stands out to you, because then we can plan uh, future events um, that kind of dive into that theme a little bit more specifically, which was how this workshop came about. Uh, yeah, so engagement, motivation, maybe that could be, that was a big one that came through in the survey. Um, and I think that's it. Is there anything else, Nicole and Shanna, that you would like to add? No, just that we hope that at least you'll have some resources we kind of tried to populate it so that you can get some ideas and that our main thing like I said was we looked at kind of the list of people who had joined the last time people had joined this time and we decided that um, yeah we will take on the responsibility of making you guys the official list of all the teachers uh, as many teachers as we can get who teach individualized so that you will have like lists of teachers with their subject because I think bar none as a teacher myself that's like who I want to get stuff from, right? I want to be able to send out an email and say, hey, I'm having problems with this. I'm looking for something, uh, can you help? And uh, I think that will go a long way to alleviating and uh, you know, just getting people uh, comfortable networking and sharing things. Uh, other message, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? I, I, I admit I was one of these ones that in years previous, I didn't want to share because it wasn't perfect and I was really scared of it. Uh, oh gosh, they're just gonna, but now I've gotten to the point where, you know what, this is what I've been able to do. Like we all know what our reality is, right? We do the best we can with what we've got. If it can inspire somebody, uh, I think the best thing is throw it out there and hopefully, you know, it'll return to you at some, some point and we can always make our stuff better. Even if it is, you know, perfect. Ha ha ha. I don't know about you, but I've never taught the same way twice. So <laughs> Like I, it's just continuous. So I think if we can help each other out and start that networking process, we're all going to be in a much better place and have a lot more support and maybe not feel like we are drowning in our silos because individualization is, yeah, we, we tend to, you know, get drowned with everything. Also, there's no, like, has anybody ever found anything on the internet that is about teaching in an individualized setting, like with while you're teaching other subjects, potentially like it's probably be done, you know? If anybody does find anything like it's that, send it to the list. Book, yeah? I was, mm -hmm. uh, there's a book, but it's in French uh, about individualized uh, learning and teaching. Mm. 
Is it's this that? Specific to vocational training. I told you about that one. Yes, yes. So I'm going to send you. <laughs> supposed to read it. Where is it? <laughs> yes, find it for us, Virginie. I want to yeah, know what it's called. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's not, it was in my principal's office. I'm doing this face to you. Oh. It's very technical. There it is. Okay. It's and about it, the technicalities behind programming a vocational training individualized class, not the pedagogy behind. Oh, no, it's not the pedagogy. No, it's not the pedagogy. It's not the We just have to write it ourselves, apparently. Mm -hmm. That's yep, what we got to do. Right? Thesis. Oh, Go ahead, Emily. No, no, no. How about we get Nancy to write that thesis? <laughs> Nancy's in the program. So there you go. We've planned it all out so for you. Perfect. But I feel like it's the future. Individualized learning. I know I would like to learn that way because I, I don't always like teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you can, uh, if I think uh, more and more universities are, maybe they're going towards this direction. No? I think it's all it's going to at least be an option for people. I think I think like you said Virginie like it's not necessarily for everybody. Some people need that time to come together and chat with one another, engage in learning um that they they learn through that that kind of way. But then there's also people like my partner for example is such an autodidact. Like he doesn't want to have to listen to somebody else tell him what's important. He wants to learn what he needs to learn to program his video game like Justin, like right when he needs it and he will deep dive into that and yeah. he's he's good to go by himself. He has, yeah. Yeah, because I had to stop my master's degree because I teach in the evenings, I never know when. So uh, I, I don't take classes anymore. If, mm. if they were offered in an individualized setting, yeah, good, you know? So yeah. I'm thinking maybe it's, uh, it's gonna be the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We shall see. Yeah, I hope. All right, everybody, it is two o'clock. So we are going to let you go if you are registered for another workshop this afternoon. Um, I'm just gonna stick in the chat here. This is the link to our website where you're gonna be able to find the Zoom link for your next session. Um, so thank you so much for coming today. We're so Why happy to have you. Had you. Go?